ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. This year, as you may have noticed, we are releasing the statistics, the figures for our services all at once. Last year and the year before, we did the patent cooperation treaty on its own, and then we did the, the trademarks. So this year, we're doing all at once, uh, and I'll hand over the floor to the Director General to basically uh, walk you through the year in a review for 2012 for each one of the services, and then we'll be happy to take your questions. <coughs> Thank you very much, Sama. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much for coming this afternoon. Look, a preliminary word, perhaps. There are three systems on which we're reporting. The Patent Cooperation Treaty, which deals with international patent applications, the Madrid Agreement, or Madrid System, which deals with trademarks, and the Hague System, which deals with industrial designs. Uh, they have a different number of participants, each of them. So the most broad geographically is the PCT, which has 146 members. Uh, the next most broad is the Madrid system with 89 members. And the Hague is the least mature of the systems in terms of its geographical size. I mention that because therefore the PCT gives a very accurate picture of what is going on in terms of patenting activity worldwide. The Madrid also gives a considerably accurate picture, but it is not as complete as the picture that you would get with if you had 146 members. And the Hague gives the least you know, complete picture of industrial design activity worldwide. Uh, one other thing about those systems, then, is that uh, both the Madrid system and the Hague system while being at this stage less broad and less mature geographically, are in the process of expansion. So for the Madrid system, last year, Colombia, Mexico, the Philippines, and New Zealand all joined the system. And we're expecting India to join it next month. Uh, Madrid. 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 Yeah. So, uh, Madrid is in the process of, you know, really growing and becoming a truly international system. As far as the Hague system is concerned, we're hopeful that China and the US will join by the end of the year uh, and that Japan will follow next year and the Republic of Korea, Korea, if not next year, the year after. So that also is in uh, the process of expansion and we will be give, able to give you a better picture for trademarks and for designs of worldwide activity. Now coming back to the uh, results of these three systems with those qualifications last year, um, it's a, it was a very good year for the systems, a very good year. So this is once again telling a story of uh, actually quite robust growth in the systems despite the weak international economic climate. Uh, and um, that is probably, I would say, and Carsten Fink, our expert and chief economist, can also comment after I have spoken, but that is probably due to, uh, we believe, at least two factors. One is the importance of building strong intangible asset portfolios. Uh, even in times of crisis, because you need it for the recovery. And secondly, the continued expansion of these systems, the use of these systems, in, in particular Northeast Asia. So while uh, demand may have been relatively flat in Europe, it has been quite robust in Northeast uh, Asia. Uh, now, what were the, those, you know, what was what were the actual figures for the robustness? 6.6% um, increase in international patent applications to 194,400. I think you have the figure already. 4.1% uh, increase in international trademark applications and 3.5% increase in the number of designs. And I say designs rather than applications because you can file more than one design in the same application. So it's a, just a, a way of measuring it. And then some comments on those uh, general figures. Uh, first of all, 
China, Japan, and the U.S. accounted for three quarters of the of the 6.6 percent growth in the PCT. Those three um, countries. Uh, the U.S. remains the largest filer of international patent applications with 51,000. I can give you the exact number if you like, 51,207. Well, you've got it. Sorry, you've got it uh, on your fig on your sheet if you have that. Followed by Japan, Germany, and China. Interestingly, China was within 250 of taking over Germany, so it didn't quite do it, which some of us had thought it might happen. But Germany remains in third position. China just behind uh, uh, Germany. Um, let me say that overall the trend that we've been talking about now on a yearly basis, on an annual basis, of the growth from North East Asia, let me just give you the figure. In 2008, China, Republic, China Japan and the Republic of Korea accounted for 26.2% of international patent applications. 2012, that was 38.1%. So it's really quite remarkable, you know, this continued growth. Um, and, and similarly, as that has increased, Germany and the US, for example, over the same period went from 43.2% of all international patent applications to 36%. So, you know, one down, the other up. Uh, what else shall I tell you uh, about the uh, two other things, if I may tell you, about the uh, international patent applications? Uh, the, the largest filer was ZTE, or ZTE, if you're American, with 3,906 international patent applications. Uh, so China first, uh, ZTE first, second Panasonic, third Sharp, and f fourth Huawei. So the top four PCT applicants, the top four filers of international patent applications are from China and Japan. <coughs> uh, and perhaps a word on the middle income countries, uh, just to say that uh, looking at those, after China, which is right out there with 18,000 applications, you then get India with 1,200, uh, Russian Federation with 950, Brazil with 580, Turkey with 450, and South Africa with 300. So there's a big distance between in numbers there. And uh, Russia? Nine, eight, 850, I think I said? 950. 950 956, exactly. 956, Russia. Brazil last year. 956. Did you get it? It's in, it's, it's in the table. Okay. okay. Uh, a word about uh, trademarks then. So, um, with the qualifications that I made, it's 4.1% 4 4 growth. That generally is a pretty good indicator uh, of economic activity, you know, starting to pick up because trademarks are usually new products or new enterprises, new products, services, or enterprises. Uh, and Japan, the UK, and the US accounted for 80% of that 4.1% growth. We've got a slightly different geography of trademarks to uh, the geography of, of technology and patents, and that's due to the system, really, uh, you know, the fact that it's been traditionally a European system. The US was relatively recently coming into it and so on. But the uh, biggest father is Germany, followed by the US and France. The US is increasing its use of the system, interestingly. Uh, and amongst the fastest growers last year were Japan, with increasing by 33%. Again, that's, you know, increasing its use of the system, I'd say. Uh, the UK, 22%, and Turkey, 22%. The biggest applicant was Novartis uh, of Switzerland. 
And I suppose the only other thing I would say is that the country that was what we call technically the most designated, that means the country in which people uh, filing applications wanted protection the most, was China. You know, uh, which was designated uh, 20,000 times. Next is the European Union, 16,000, 17,000 times. Next, Russia. Russian Federation, 16,000, and China, and the US, 16,000. So it's quite interesting, you know, the, the magnetism of the Chinese market. And then a quick word on uh, uh, industrial designs and the Hague system. So some growth. Uh, Germany is the largest uh, user of the system, followed by Switzerland and France. Um, and the biggest... Uh, individual user is Swatch, Swatch Group, uh, which overtook Procter & Gamble as the biggest user of the system last year. Uh, and I would say the only other uh, comment I would make to you is that Philips is the only company in the top ten of each system, PAP, PCT, trademarks and designs. Yeah. Okay, uh, Carsten, perhaps if I may hand over to Carsten, say a few words, if you want. I think you've summarised it uh, well, and I, at this point I wouldn't have anything... You answer the questions. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have anything to add. Yeah. Okay, so... Sure. Your questions, please. Yes, yes. Uh, what about the uh, Brazil concern in the Madrid Protocol? When mm. you expect that Brazil... Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we are hopeful that the dossier is moving in Brazil. Uh, we're hopeful that Colombia and Mexico's entry is going to provide an encouragement, and certainly India's entry will provide further encouragement to Brazil. So it, it makes less and less sense for Brazil to be outside the system. And uh, so we are rather optimistic that if it's not this year, it'll be next year. You know. Yeah. Yes, um, I just wanted, uh, perhaps, if you could clarify something from you. You did say that China, Japan, and the US accounted for three quarters of the 6.6% 6 .6 growth in the patents yeah. application. Um, if you take the, the share, uh, according to the charts, you know, it comes under 60%. So I just want to. Make sure you're saying that these three account for uh, three, three quarters, quarters of, the of the growth. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. And likewise, in terms of the um, trademark, you did say it was Japan, Germany, and the US. 81% of the growth? Japan, no, it was uh, Japan, UK, and US. 80%. Yep. Can I also ask as well um, the growth rate? You said it was, um, I don't know what the exact term you said, it was good year. Uh, Robust. Robust. Yeah. But it was less robust than the previous year. Is there any yeah. particular reason for that? Uh, uh, I would say, and maybe Carson can follow, that, that uh, of course the, the total volume of applications is bigger each year. So it's a percentage increase we're giving, not an absolute increase. <clears throat> uh, and we're now up to 194,000 international applications. We would expect that in the course of 2013, we would pass 200,000. But, um, you know, these high growth rates of 6.6%, that's a very high growth rate when you compare it to national growth rates. National growth rates, with the exception of exceptions like China, you know, national growth rates are usually around about the, between 2 and 5%, you know, in good years. Uh, so 6.6% is still very strong. And that strength is coming in particular from last year, from Japan, which is interesting. And it's more, we believe, a change in patenting behaviour, internationalising more of their applications. Uh, and it's coming from China, you know, up, Japan up 12%, China up 13%, uh, China up 13% on, as the fourth largest. So those both have large volumes of applications and they're increasing by double digit figures. Well, and if I can add to that, 
um, I think what one also has to take into account that uh, when the economic crisis hit uh, in 2009, this was the one year, the one single year in the history of the PCT system where the system saw a drop of, uh, four, of filings of 4.5%. And since then, you have seen a rebound. And I think the experience in 2010 and 2011, you know, one should uh, probably, you know, see as a, as a post-crisis rebound. And I think it was quite evident that especially the high growth rate of more than 10% that we saw in 2011 would, would, would not be sustainable. I think it's also important to realize that if you look at the growth rate of China, um, that growth rate in 2012 is lower than the growth rate in 2010 and 2011. But that is a natural phenomenon uh, when um, um, China um, started to um, really um, see large increases in 2009. This was from a relatively low base. And since growth rates always measure relative increases, I think it's quite natural that um, you know, once you have a larger base, you, know, you still see strong absolute increases. But the growth rate in terms of you know, the the, the percentage increase that we see that, that, is, that is coming down somewhat. Just a question on Canada. I see that their growth rate actually went down 6.7% um, mm -hmm. last year. Is there any reason for that in particular? Uh, no, it's bad. no, we don't know. Uh, what, what happened in the preceding three years, if I'm not mistaken, is that Canada went up quite significantly. Uh, but why it went down 6% in one year, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, listen, and you would see this for many countries, there are year-to-year -year fluctuations um, that, um, you know, we, we don't have an obvious explanation for. I'm sure, you know, there is an explanation in, in the case of Canada, but, uh, you know, it is quite natural to, you know, for, for um, you know, these filings to, to fluctuate from one year to another. Uh, you know, it's obviously different if you look at, uh, you know, sort of these fast-growing countries like China, also the Republic of Korea, we've seen <coughs> strong growth, uh, you know, where that persists. But that's, you know, I think these are probably more the exception to the rule in the system. Um, I'm not familiar with the history of this. I just wonder whether it's normal not to really see any oil companies or gas companies in there at all. There's lots of electronics companies and new companies and such like. Is that normal? Mm. You know, um, the mining technology and extraction technology is an important field, but it's not as prolific as, as electronics technology, for example. Uh, so that's the first thing I'd say. Second thing is that uh, in that area, you also get quite a significant number of process inventions, process as opposed to product inventions. And when you get the process inventions, you get a higher usage of trade secrecy rather than the patent system because they, they can continue to work it without anyone knowing what it's about because of the process invention. So I'd say those are probably two explanations. I could add to that, if you look at the breakdown of PCT filings in 2012 by field of technology, and I believe this is both in the press release as well as in these you know, one-page charts that uh, we've provided you with, uh, you would see that the two fields that have seen the fastest growth in 2012 are electrical machinery and digital communications. These are fields of technologies that broadly relate to information and communication technologies. And uh, I think that on the one hand reflects that you know, this is the sort of broad field of technology that has seen you know, tremendous technological opportunities, you know, where a lot of innovation is, is happening. Uh, uh, but also, these are industries that are extremely competitive and where it has become really important uh, to, um, to, to have a portfolio of patents and uh, uh, for you to be competitive in, in, in the marketplace. And you know, this is what uh, is, is borne out in our data. And I suppose one other thing that might be, if you if you analysed it, is this uh, just a guess. Uh, I'm sure there's a patent on that sound. Uh, you might have um, you might have a classification question too. So satellite imaging for extractive in industries f uh, and the use of satellites or IT uh, for uh, exploration or prospecting 
may not be classified as, you know, under the extractive industries, but might be classified under IT. Yeah. Um, um, so, You're attracting a lot of noise. <laughs> The, the patterns uh, and other applications being filed by the universities, do they think, mm. uh, reflect the same subject areas as the ones being filed by companies? Um, look, at, at a guess, and it's a guess because, you know, uh, uh, I think you'll find that life sciences figure very prominently in the university's patenting. Uh, and. Um, Carsten, any well, and I think you know that is yeah. sort of with the nature of the of the technological fields. Just the life sciences are you know much closer to science than you know the field of telecommunications. So you have a lot more inventions emerging out of the academic uh, system. I think that has to do with the with the nature of inventions uh, in in these fields. Uh, so certainly, I can't give you the specific figures. We would be happy to look them up. Um, but it's certainly the life sciences that account for most of the patent filings in, you know, university patent filings. Any more questions? Yes, yes. Sorry, we looked at the technicality. Uh, you mentioned the United States is not party to the Hague Convention, yep. yet they're the fifth. Yeah, because, um, because, uh, it, you know, how do you determine the nationality of a, a company, basically? And for tax treaties and for our treaties, you know, your right to file is either citizenship as an individual or effective establishment, I think, is the terminology we use for the Hague. It's um, uh, a, a effective commercial establishment, isn't it? I think it? it's real and effective industrial Re or commercial establishment. Real and effective industrial commercial establishment. So if they have a, a subsidiary, uh, or, um, you know, a major uh, operation in one country that will give them entitlement to use the system if that country is a party. So two subsidiaries joint that Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Good. We'll Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Yeah. 28th of March for another one.